When AMD released its Threadripper Pro processor, it brought a whole new workstation into the creative industry. Today we're going to be looking inside Lenovo's P620 ThinkStation to see how it's built. Hi everyone, I'm Mike from the Media Man Studio Review and on our channel we like to bridge that gap between the creative content and the technical requirements. We like to give our viewers information so they can make informed decisions when they're purchasing equipment for their studios. In this video, we're going to take a look inside this Lenovo P620. I really enjoy this workstation. I've been working with it for a few weeks now. This is a WRX80 or a Threadripper Pro processor, and it's a real beast. So we're going to take a look inside and start taking some of the components out so you can see how the machine is built and what kind of components that you can put into it to customize your build. So before we take a look inside, we'll just take a look on the outside again. We do have our front panel connectors here. We have a couple USB uh, type A's and USB type C's. So on the back of the machine, it does have some connectors. It has some audio connectors up front, just your three basic audio connectors, a COM port, which I haven't seen in a while, so that's kind of interesting. Some PS2 ports here. We have your basic USB right here. Uh, and then as well as some USB 3.2 uh, Gen 2 for 10 gig connectivity right here and one of the main features of this system is a 10 gig Ethernet and then of course your PCI slots at the bottom. So let's take a look inside the case and this is the important part. So let's see what this thing's made of. So it's got an interesting little spring-loaded door flap, but I think that's about it as far as I like the engineering of this case. One of the things that this is missing that some of the other Lenovo systems has is it doesn't have your, your uh, airflow ducts that are built into it or, or some custom molding that's going to help push airflow into the right direction in this computer. And I think that's because this is the first generation of the system. It's the first AMD Threadripper uh, Pro system that they built. So maybe in Gen 2 or Gen 3, they'll start customizing the case a little better. So first, let's look at the cooling of the system. We do have one 92 millimeter fan in the front and one 92 millimeter fan in the back. Uh, it could use some extra cooling. On the video, it does show that there is four hard drive bays and this uh, machine here doesn't have the other cage here. It would have been nice to see another fan that was located right here so we can get some more airflow through. Uh, but it does have two very large fans on the uh, CPU heatsink itself. So we'll take that off and we'll take a look at that a little later. So the first thing we're going to do is pull out the graphic card so that we can just see inside it a little better. So this unit came with an RTX 5000. Um, as you've seen from my other videos, I did a video on GPU rendering. The Quadro RTX cards are starting to show their age and they're just not as powerful as the new RTX 3000 series cards. So uh, not my first choice. It just happened to be the one that came with the machine. I would prefer to use something like an RTX 3070, 3080 or even a 3090 in this machine. From my understanding, Lenovo has told me that in February or March of 2021, they're going to start offering this machine with the RTX 3000 series cards, or at least maybe a small selection of them. So it does come with a bit of a toolless design right here. So we'll, we'll pull the card out. And if you've never actually removed a graphic card before, there are these little red tabs that are right here. Uh, and you do need to pull that tab up and away from the card so that you can unlock it and then pull the card out. It also has a bracket here in the back, which you can see, and there is a little lever right here that opens that up so we can slide that bracket out. So let's uh, get this RTX card out. There we go. All right, and we'll just unplug the two. This has one six pin and one eight pin connector. So there's the graphic card that comes with it with a little extra support bracket. Again, an RTX 3000 series card would work much better in this machine. Much more powerful. All right, and it does come with, and we'll talk about the power supply in a little bit. It does come with four cables for plugging in your graphic card. So uh, we have two of these six plus two combo connectors and we have two of the plain six connectors. So if you were to put a graphic card that required more like two eights or multiple graphic cards, you might need to get a little splitter for this. The power supply is somewhat strong enough to be able to support two graphic cards. And we'll talk about that uh, right now. So it does have an interesting power supply. It only comes with one power supply. There is no other option. It's a thousand watts. It's a little underpowered, uh, in my opinion, 
if you were to put other things. You could not put like two RTX 3090s in this machine. Physically, uh, they would just fit, and we'll talk about spacing in a little while. But the power supply itself was just not strong enough to feed that. So, but you could put two RTX 3070s, possibly 3080s, depending on the card itself and how much power that it uses. But the power supply is interesting. It is a modular power supply with sort of looks like a PCI bracket here. And it is a 80 plus platinum power supply. So it's pretty strong and stable uh, with the 1000 watts. And it does have a connector here on the motherboard. It's interesting, the power supply itself is a 12 volt. It's all 12 volt, meaning any of the uh, five volt or 3.3 volts conversion is done on the motherboard itself instead of in the power supply. And then the power is distributed through the motherboard. And for instance, we can come over here and we can see that there's these two connectors for the graphic cards themselves. And we have some other connectors for SATA drives. And so the power is actually running inside the motherboard instead of uh, we're having external cables being plugged into the power supply itself where you would see a bunch of cables coming off, maybe modular cables. So uh, we have two hard drive bays right here and your basic SATA hard drive bays with some connectors right here. And there is six connectors right here on the motherboard that are distributed out. Some of the connectors actually go up into the top area here. This area of the case design itself is not the best use of space. I think that this could have been taken out and you could have put maybe a cage for some SSD drives up here in the top or some other fans for cooling. So uh, an optical bay for me is not the best use of space. Although one of my viewers did state, and, and I agree with him totally, you could put an LTO drive into this case. And that might be you know, one use that you would use this optical bay for. It does have M.2 drives underneath this heat sink right here. And we'll see if we can peel that open. So it's got two M.2 drives right here. Uh, it does have thermal paste. It is not an active, but it's, it's a decent little cooling mechanism that comes with it. And these are Gen 4 PCIe. So you can get the fastest solid state drives that are available today. But you could also do something like add in, you know, a, a, an M.2 riser card. So in this card itself, you can fit two M.2 drives. Uh, you can get them with four M.2, as well as things like the Liquid's Honey Badger card, which has actually eight M.2 drives that you can put on one PCI card and then put that into the system. So if you were using, say, four on one card and you were using uh, Sabarin's new uh, eight terabyte M.2 drives, you could have eight times four, that's uh, 32. You could have 64 terabytes sitting in two of these PCI slots right here, giving you lightning fast data throughput. So that would be fantastic for things like a DaVinci Resolve machine that you're using in a finishing house. You could put a 32 or a 64 core processor in this machine and then have 64 terabytes of drive space running at you know, up to probably 25 or 30 terabytes a second of throughput. Uh, there's some OS limitations, but you're going to get at least 20 terabytes of drive throughput out of the, for those 16 terabytes of drive space. So just fantastic, high, high speed computing. All right, uh, moving on, uh, let's talk about the PCI here. So we have one, two, three, four, full 16X PCIe slots uh, for graphic cards or any other, you know, um, external data connections. So very fast and it has one, two of the 8X slots. Uh, again, because there are so many PCI lanes, 128 PCI lanes in this uh, machine in total or from the CPU in total. And that is one of the main benefits of this machine is that you could put a lot of extra components in uh, graphic cards. You could put in a 100 gig NIC card in here. You could put in video IO like a black magic card. So there's a lot of space and uh, PCIe slots to take that up as well as they are all running from the CPU itself. So none of the PCIe slots are actually running through a chipset. You could probably populate all of these PCIe slots and still not gonna use up all the PCI lanes from this Threadripper Pro processor. With the chipset, it's kind of interesting because on your Epic chips, they don't have an actual chipset for it. All of the chipset functionality is moved over and is put on the CPU itself. On this uh, WRX80, it does have its own chipset for it. So this is running things like your USB, uh, some of the other connectivity. I did do a video where I had two RTX 3070s in here. If you haven't seen that, I'll put a link above or a link down in the comments below. 
Uh, please check out that video. It shows you how you can install two graphic cards in this system. You could possibly fit third, but I don't think that there's going to be enough room down here at the bottom. Plus, you're going to interfere with all these connections. But you can easily fit two with an air, uh, an air gap or a space between them for airflow. So this board does support ECC memory, up to two terabytes of it. That's another one of the main features of this machine. And it does have these RAM coolers that come with it. So they're you know easily removed. So here you can see we only have two slots populated on either side. So we're using up four of the total eight slots. Again, another benefit of this type of system that you will get over a desktop system is that you get the higher core count, you get the eight channels of memory, and you get the 128 lanes of PCIe. So that's one of the things that would make this machine a lot different than your basic desktop machine. Even if the desktop machines are you know, high powered up to 16 cores, they're still not gonna have these options. The last thing we'll do today, and Lenovo might not be too happy about it, but I'm a professional. I think I can take this out and put it back in, no problem. We're going to remove the heat sink on the CPU so you can actually see the chip itself. So it does have just four threaded bolts or threaded screws. Uh, two of them are right here and two of them are right here. So we'll work on the first hardest two first. All right, and we're going to go corner to corner so we can keep some even tension still on the CPU block. All right. So there's your cooler right there. Thermal paste in the bottom, which we will apply some new thermal paste and clean that up in a second. So I've cleaned out the CPU so you can have a look at it here. It is a WRX80. You know, some are calling it the WEPIC, the Workstation Epic chip, uh, because it's generally pretty close to exactly what an Epic chip is, um, except again, designed for, you know, more workstation productivity. So on the heat sink itself, you can see here, we do have an all copper distribution plate, two heat sinks themselves and 80 millimeter fans drawing the air through. So it's a pretty good design for a, an air cooler. You could put you know, a, a liquid cool on a Threadripper Pro. There's just no place to put it in this case. So the airflow again is from the front of the system in through the CPU and out the back. It could have used a bigger fan in the back for some cooling, but you know, due to size and space constraints. Uh, this is the best that they had to offer. I've been running this machine for a couple weeks. I have not heard it ramp up very loud at all. It's uh, very quiet sitting under my desk and I have been doing some renders that you know take three, four, five hours and uh, it doesn't get very hot at all. I think the top CPU temperature that I got was about 82 degrees and that was you know really hammering on it with some high-end 3D rendering. So let's talk about some of the pros and cons about this Lenovo machine. So one of the pros is that you are in the Lenovo ecosystem. You're buying a workstation that's complete and put together for you. Uh, everything is tested and, and certified that it's going to run correctly. One of the downfalls of this system is that you are in the Lenovo ecosystem, meaning you cannot modify this case at all. So if you wanted to, you know, put in a liquid cooler or other things in it. You couldn't put it in other than PCIe cards and maybe some hard drives. Uh, but again, Lenovo has great service and support. Uh, they have been fantastic working with me and any questions that I've had you know, about configuring and fine tuning the system, I get uh, responses very quickly from their service department. Uh, another really good thing about this ecosystem or this build itself is no matter if you buy the 12 or the 64 core, the chassis and the form factor is the exact same. So you could actually buy one of these machines with a 16 or 12 core processor, and then 24 or 36 months into the future, you find that you need more computing power, more cores to do your daily workload. You could just drop in a 32 or a 64 core processor into this machine. So just fantastic. So I'm pretty much done. I'm just going to put the machine back together and then I'm gonna run a lot more benchmarks. So I have been benchmarking this again. I built a new machine just last week. It is a Ryzen 5900X, which is a 12 core, 24 thread machine. Uh, fantastic for the workload that I'm doing here at the studio, editing videos, doing some you know, graphic work and 3D animation. So I'm gonna benchmark that against this 16 core machine and see how it goes and see how they compare. Now that I've taken the entire system apart, I won't bore you with putting it back together. I'll do that off camera. But if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe.
and hit notifications because over the next few months we are going to be looking at as many software packages as we can that are used in the creative industry for animation, visual effects, and video production. And we're going to find how we can best tailor systems or find the best suited power for each of those software packages. And we'll do a comparison of price versus performance as well as you know, uh, what's the most powerful system that you can buy for those software packages. So I really enjoyed doing this video for you and I'll see you in the next one.